Welcome back, everybody. Once again, welcome to Thrive, where I believe you were not created to survive, but to thrive. And if you change yourself, you can change your world. I am your host, Alex Sagat. I'm excited to get back into another brand new episode today. I'm really excited about today's topic. It's something that I talked about uh, with our team recently, with our leadership team, and I'm excited to put it on the podcast, and hopefully it can help you today wherever you are. Today, I want to talk to you from this topic. It's time to go higher. It's time to go higher. Uh, I was talking about this with our team because I believe there are moments, seasons in life where you need to make certain decisions, certain adjustments. You need to pivot if you want to go to a higher level in your career, in your industry, in your organization, as a church. Uh, If we want to excel, if we want to become excellent, you want to become world class, there's going to be times and it's going to be more than once where you need to go higher. And so that's going to require uh, changes uh, from us. I want to look at this one verse really quick in scripture. It is found in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 2, verse 52. G- um, Luke, speaking of Jesus, says this. It says, and, he, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Once again, Luke 2, 52 Uh, Luke writes, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Uh, Luke there in the 52nd verse, he gives us four ways that Jesus grew. Uh, These are called the silent years of Jesus. In other words, we stop hearing about Jesus from about the age of 12 all the way to the age of 30. At the age of 30, Jesus appears back on the scene. John the Baptist is baptizing people, baptizes Jesus Jesus begins his ministry life. Uh, But there were some years there that we don't know much about Jesus. They're called the silent years. What we do know is that he grew in wisdom and stature in favor with God and in man. I was telling our team recently that many times we wait till we get an opportunity to start growing, to start learning, to start going to the next level. What I love about Jesus is that during the silent years, he was growing. Don't wait until you have a platform. Don't wait until you have a title. Don't wait until the lights are on you to grow. You need to grow when nobody's looking. You need to go higher when nobody's eyes are on you. It's time that you uh, start preparing yourself for what God has for you. In other words, if you stay ready, you never have to get ready. That's something we've been talking about as a team. If you stay ready, you never have to get ready. And so Jesus was getting prepared when nobody knew his name, when there was not a lot of attention on him, when maybe it was only Mary and Joseph who knew him. He was was preparing himself. He was getting ready. He was in scripture. Luke tells us four different ways that Jesus grew. He grew intellectually. The Bible says he grew in wisdom. He grew intellectually, right? Jesus was well studied. He knew scriptures. Obviously, he was God, but he was also studying scripture. At about the age of uh, 12, I believe, they find him in the temple and they lose him for a minute. When they find him, he says, well, I'm about my father's business. And he was studying the scrolls with some of the old wise teachers. And so Jesus was growing intellectually. Number two, Jesus was growing physically, right? He was growing in stature. Maybe we're already at our physical height where we're going to grow, but that doesn't mean you can't still work on your physical temple, on your body. How can I grow? How can I develop muscles? How can I get stronger? Not just spiritually, but I also want to get strong physically. What's a a hobby, an exercise that I can start doing? Jesus grew intellectually. Jesus grew physically. Jesus also grew uh, spiritually. The Bible says in favor with God, right? You set time apart to seek God's face. You, you set some time apart to sit, spend time in, in silence and solitude and meditate in scripture. You go on walks, right? I love going on prayer walks. I've developed that over the last three, four years. I'm, I'm just going to go walk, walk around my neighborhood. I'm going to go to a park and I'm just going to take walks because I want to grow with God. I, I want to grow in favor with God. I want to be his friend. He's my friend. I want him to call me his friend and I want to develop a relationship. Jesus was spending time with the Father. And then number four, Jesus was growing relationally. It says not only with God, but also with man. And we can't discount that. It's important uh, that we develop good relationships, good connections in life, people who are going to pour into us, help us, mentor us, lead us, pastor us, but also people that we can do that with as well. The four ways that Jesus grew, intellectually, physically, spiritually, relationally. So I want to ask you today, are you growing? 
Are you developing? Are you growing in stature? Are you growing in wisdom and favor with God, with man? Uh, it's time to go higher. We can't remain the same. If we are going to be leaders who thrive, if we are going to be leaders who overcome obstacles, challenges, painful moments of life, this is a leadership leadership podcast. If we are going to be people who grow and thrive, then you need to always constantly uh, be ready, be prepared, stay getting ready. So you never have to get ready when life gives you a good opportunity. It's time to go higher. Uh, I was telling some friends this and our team this. Um, I don't know why over the last few years I developed a fear of heights. I, I, I don't know why. I grew up working with my father. My father works on all kind of electrical signs. So I, I worked on rooftops, on buildings. I was in his bucket truck uh, growing up my entire life. Never was afraid of heights. Over the last few years, I felt like I developed it. I was able to get some help. And uh, today, thank God, I'm no longer afraid of heights. I just have a high respect of heights. But uh, I was telling the team, I like to torture myself, and I love watching these YouTube videos of people that walk alongside of the buildings, skyscrapers, or people who uh, go parachuting. Or my favorite is, uh, I think it's called gliders, people who just have this bodysuit and they glide down mountains. And I literally torture myself. I love watching it, though. Um, I wish I could do it. I will never do it, but I wish I could. But I'll watch it and it just creates something. And I'm like, I, these people are uh, incredible. I just can't believe they do these things. Uh, I was watching some of these videos and I went to watch one of a man who was going to parachute off a hot air balloon. Um, it showed their whole day journey, how they were going to get prepared, how they started to prepare for this stunt. And uh, it shows how they got there about 4.30 in the morning. The hot air balloon was being held down by these stakes on the ground. And they started recording 4.30 in the morning. They started bringing all kind of food, drinks, camera equipment, microphones. It was going to be a day recording where they were going to do multiple jumps, uh, multiple stunts. By the time the sun was beginning to rise, 6.37, uh, they begin to take the stakes off the ground. And they begin uh, to take the ropes off the hot air balloon because it's time to go higher. And that just spoke to me. I really do believe that sometimes you just got to let go of some things in your life if you're going to go to the next level. You got to let go of some things. You got to let go of some weights. There, there is something you need to detach from in order for you to increase too. And so I think in my own personal life, I've done that several times. There's been times where I've had to detach from certain relationships, people or, or people who weren't uh, no longer serving what I believe God was calling me to. And again, it's not that I'm never going to be friends with them again, but I just got to watch my time. I got to watch where I'm investing my time, my my mind, my eyes to. I got to be so careful. Like we are going higher. There's much more that God has for us. And the Bible says eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has prepared in store for those who love him. And I just believe God has much more for you and I. God has much more for you, for your marriage, for your family. Like I believe if we serve God and we give him our entire life, he will bless you. He'll open doors and windows of opportunity you can't even imagine. But in order to go higher, you may need to detach from some things, some bad habits, some bad um, mentalities, uh, maybe some language that you've been using. Uh, what's holding you down? What's the lid on your life that you need to detach from? It's time to go higher. The same way Jesus grew, I want to keep growing. And I believe that we are never going to get, get to perfection until we see uh, Jesus face to face. In the meantime, I want to strive for perfection. I want to be a leadership who's always striving to go and aim higher. Um, and so today I want to talk about just a few things as we um, zoom in on this episode and, and try to finish it up. Um, this morning, this day, I hope this helps you. Um, if you don't want to get buried by life, you need to get better in life. In other words, the world is advancing. Uh, technology is advancing, industries are advancing, all kind of software programs exist today. Uh, if you don't want to get left behind and buried uh, in this fast-paced world, you need to get better in this life. And so I want to get better. Uh, I want to get better in my emotional life, spiritual life, physical life. Today, let's get better. I want to talk about seven things then that we must resist if we want to get better and if we want to go higher. It's time to go higher. The same way Jesus grew, I want to challenge you today. Uh, you're not there yet. I'm not there yet. Let's all grow. Good leaders are leaders who know they've never arrived. They're leaders who thrive to the next challenge. I want to grow. I, wa I want to uh, begin to expand my mind, my mentality, my attitude, my spirit to grow and learn more. Seven things we have to resist. Number one, uh, let's start the seven uh, list of things we must resist. 
number one, resist the urge to settle. I think in life, if you're not careful, uh, you'll have a settling mentality. I feel good here. Uh, this is a good space for me to be in. Uh, my company's in a good place. My church is in a good place. My family's in a good place. We've settled. Like I'm, I'm, I'm settled. Be careful that you're not settling in the place uh, where you're not meant to be forever. In other words, I'm, I'm reminded in Genesis of Abraham where he settles in a city that he was not meant. God told him to go to the promised land and he was settling in the city before. Uh, today, what do you need to get up and move on from that you've settled? Maybe perhaps you've settled in your growth, you've settled in your attitude, you've settled in your personality. Where have you settled in life? Uh, maybe your marriage. You're like, yeah, yeah, we're good. Can it be better? In your relationships, maybe with parents, with your children. Yeah, we, we have an okay relationship. But have you settled? Can it be better? Can we grow? I want to be great. I want to be great in relationships. I want to be. I want my marriage not to be good. I want it to be great. Where can I get better? Um, I've asked Diana this question before. Hey, how am I doing? Can I, can I be better? There's something I can serve you better in, right? I don't want to just settle. Resist the urge to settle. I was reading this book called The Culture Code, and uh, I think you should read it. It's a phenomenal book on culture. And in the book, the author gives a study that happened in Australia where they grabbed this one guy and they insert him into three different teams. And he's supposed to play a character, meaning he's supposed to go into these teams and disrupt the team. He's going to play three characters. He's either going to be a jerk, uh, he's going to be a slacker, or he's going to be a downer. And the study was to see how the team reacted uh, to inserting a bad apple into it. Uh, what they found was in two teams, the people around started settling and they started lowering their behavior, lowering their values uh, to be what this uh, bad apple is. So, for example, he goes into one team and he lowers his head in meetings and he just has his head down. Over some time, uh, the rest of them, few of them started lowering their heads and not paying attention, slacking off, being people who were downs. Uh, their attitudes started copying this new guy who came in with a bad attitude. Right? People began to settle. I think there's a human tendency to settle. There's, there's something about gravity that pulls us down and we settle. Um, they finally got to this third team and there was somebody on that team who decided, I'm not going to settle. I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to be a leader. I, I believe in the book, he wasn't even a vocal leader. He wasn't a chosen leader, but there was a guy on team, if I'm not mistaken, his name was Jonathan, who said, no, I'm, I'm going to fight this settling attitude, this settling kind of spirit. And he decided to overcome. And um, this bad apple couldn't get through to him to become what he wanted him to be. No, I'm, I'm going to rise above it. I'm not going to settle in my attitude. Do not let a bad apple uh, make you settle in your family, in your marriage, in your business, in your organization, in your church. Come on, let's rise above it because it's time to go higher. Have you settled? It's time to go higher. Number two, uh, things that we have to resist, uh, meeting the standard, meeting the standard. Um, resist just meeting the standard. What I told our team is I just don't want to um, if I'm given an assignment, I just don't want to complete my assignment. I want to go above and beyond. Uh, in other in other words, I want to be make sure I am completely thorough in what I'm asked to do. And I also go the extra mile. Jesus said, if somebody asks you to go one mile, go two. Right? I want to go over and above, not in a prideful, arrogant way, but I just want to have a, a spirit of excellence, a culture of excellence. I want to make sure I just don't do uh, the average. I just don't meet the requirement. I'm going to resist I'm going to resist just meeting the standard. I'm going to resist just uh, completing an assignment. No, I want to go over and above. I, a lot of people can do standard. A lot of people can do average. But good leaders, leaders, especially leaders who are full of the Spirit of God, I'm going to go over and above, right? It doesn't matter what title or position I have. It doesn't matter how small or big the organization that I'm a part of is. I can rise above. I can have a spirit of excellence. I can go high. I want to grow. I want to grow. I tell people on our team, if there's a conference you want to attend, if there's a class you want to take, uh, whatever it is, we're going to invest some money for all of us to grow. Where do you want to go? Tell us. I, I love when the team around us says, hey, I'm going to this and this conference. Hey, can I go here? Can I take this class? Because we're all not just going to meet the standard. It's not just I'm doing my job. I'm doing it good. No, I want to excel. How can I grow? How, how can I maybe go into another position in my company? in my, the business that I have, in the organization that I'm a part of. I want to grow. I'm, I'm not going to settle, and I'm not going to meet the standard. I'm going to go higher. It's time to go higher. Number one, resist the urge to settle. Number two, uh, meeting the standard. Number three, resist the familiar spirit. Resist the familiar spirit. Um, I think uh, so many times we just become familiar. 
we, we become familiar with people. We become familiar with uh, the things around us. And if you want to go higher, you got to be okay uh, with uh, what is excellence, respect, honor, above average. I'm not going to grow familiar with the people around me, with the people in my organization. Uh, I'm going to understand we all have different assignments from God. The Spirit of God is calling us to go higher. Don't become too familiar with where you are right now that you get mad when things begin to change. I was visiting uh, a massive church recently, and they were telling us the difference between a mom and pop shop and a world-class organization that still has a uh, familiar spirit um, or a family spirit, excuse me. Uh, they're not familiar with one another, but they have a family spirit. What I mean is they honor each other. They love each other. They have a family dynamic. They all love each other. They get along their friends, but they are world class. And they said they had to separate themselves from being mom and pops. A mom and pop shop, a corner store, uh, everybody knows each other. There's almost sometimes the level of respect a little bit lower uh, everybody knows each other. You walk in. Yeah, it's mom and pop shop. Everybody walks in. You can do whatever you want. There's a little bit of disorganization. Um, there's no order. There's a little bit of chaos in a mom and pop shop. Um, but if you want to grow, if you want to become world class, don't become familiar. Don't become familiar with the way things are done. Don't become familiar when change comes. You you resist it. You're like, I don't want change. No, that, don't become familiar. Resist the urge or the feeling of becoming familiar, that familiar spirit. I want to be world class in what I do and how I act and how I carry myself in my organization, in my business. I want to be world class. So I'm going to actually spend time in growing. Uh, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to welcome change. Hey, maybe back then I, I spent an hour with my coworker. Now I understand we may have just five minutes to say hi to each other because our organization is changing. We're growing. I said that to our team. Our church is changing. And maybe back then we could all grab a coffee and uh, talk in a meeting about things that we're doing for an hour. Guess what? Uh, today, things have changed. You may not catch me in a meeting for an hour anymore. It's okay. Don't become familiar. We're growing. We're expanding. God is increasing our size, our influence. Uh, make sure you resist the familiar spirit. Number four, resist the praise of self. Resist the praise of self, meaning it, it, that it has to do all about you. It has to be all about you. Uh, I think this is a, something extremely, extremely dangerous. I was reading a book called The Winner Within by Pat Riley. I love everything that Pat Riley does. I think he's an incredible leader, obviously uh, an amazing president, GM for the Miami Heat. Um, but I, I love his leadership talks, and this book is absolutely one of my favorites. And he was talking about the difference between a championship team and a team who is just getting by in the regular season average. And he was saying that uh, really good players who want to win a championship know that it's not about them. They don't need the ball in their hands all the time. They don't need to be the one with the most points. They know what sacrifice is. If you want to go higher, you need to know that it's not about you. It's not about me. I'm okay with somebody else getting the spotlight. I'm okay with somebody else doing what I used to do. I'm okay with somebody else running this meeting. I'm okay if I don't have control. It's Pastor Craig Rochelle who said, you can either have growth or control, but you can't have both. If you want growth in your organization, in your business, in your team, in your church, you may have to give up control, sacrifice, resist the praise of self. It's not about me, uh, right? I, I want to succeed. I want to go over and above. I want to make sure that we reach championship world-class level where it's not about one individual. It's about a team effort. If you can resist the praise of self to say, people don't need to know my name. People don't know, need to know that I'm doing this and that. Um, I believe that you can reach championship level. We're at church here at Calvary Church, we're going for world class. We're going for championship level. That's, what I talk, that's how I talk to the team. That's how we talk to each other. Like, hey, we're, we're going to be world class. If we're not already there, this is what we're going for. And in fact, we're going to continue to get better. Uh, but we got to know it's not about us. Ego can exist in the room. Pride, arrogance cannot exist. Narcissism cannot exist in our rooms, in our meetings. Like, this is a shared thing. We're all working together to lift up the name of Jesus, to reach a community, a city, and the world for Jesus. And so resist the praise of self. Number five, uh, you need to resist the repeating sound. What I mean by that is um, sometimes, kind of like the familiar spirit, we, we just use the same language all the time. It's small language. And I think it's time that uh, we stop getting used to a repeating sound, repeating words. 
Why don't we, I told the team, why don't we expand our vocabulary? Why don't we expand our mind? Uh, why don't we begin talking different is what I told them. You need to talk. Uh, if you're going to be world class, start talking like world class. I remember many, many years ago, I was probably about 19, 20 years ago, I was serving in a young adult ministry and I was um, helping our young adult pastor and I would travel with him. He would take me with him to many, many places. It was an incredible experience for me. I was with him for a number of years. And I remember one time uh, we were hanging out in the car, we were driving toward a meeting and he said, Alex, uh, I believe there's a call of God over your life, but don't wait until you're named a pastor to start acting like a pastor. Don't wait until you get a title to start acting like what you're going to be. Um, he saw, he called out, he was basically prophesying uh, a call over my life, and maybe I didn't even see it back then to that extent. Um, but that, those words, that phrase was so profound for me. I said, yeah, that's absolutely, at 1920, I said, okay, if I'm going to serve God, if I see myself uh, serving God to whatever capacity I saw at that time, I needed to walk different. I needed to talk different. Um, I tell that to people now all the time. If I'm out for a lunch, for a coffee, if I'm having a counseling session, I tell people, what is your vision? Where are you going? Start acting like it now before you get there. That may mean you need to change your language. You're using small language. You're using words that are going to keep your world small. Start expanding your mind. Start acting and start talking like where you are going. Expand your vocabulary. Talk bigger. Talk with faith. Talk with hope. Talk with expectancy, with expectation. You need to talk bigger. Leave negative self-talk behind. Leave a uh, faithless talk behind. Leave small mentality talk behind. It's time to think bigger. It's time to go higher. Number six, resist the love of settings. Resist the love of settings. Uh, what I mean by that is so many people can get used to um, their world. Kind of the same thing with the familiar spirit. Once again, uh, you become familiar to your settings, to your environments. I was visiting this church several years ago, and they were growing exponentially. I mean, it was just absolutely awesome. And I was having this conversation with the pastor, and he told me that one of the challenges was that as they were growing, when they went into a new building, some people, uh, part of the organization, were so upset that their auditorium now felt bigger. They felt like it's not the same people that we used to have. I don't know where people are anymore. My office space changed. I needed to change office locations. And some of those people were no longer part of the organization. They could not go higher because they were too used to settings. They wanted their office never to be touched, never to be changed. They never wanted to go to a bigger auditorium. Like, I just think if you want your company to grow, your organization to grow, your family to grow, you can't get used to settings. You can't get used to saying, well, this is the little warehouse we're always going to have. No, if you want growth, if you want to grow higher, if you want to grow your influence, your leadership, guess what? You may outgrow that warehouse. You may have to get a new warehouse and you may have some people around you who are so in love with settings, they may be holding you back. No, let's not move. No, let's not do this. No, let's not freshen up things. I love to always freshen up things in our church, right? Let's, let's freshen up meetings. After a number of years, we'll change the way we do things. Like, hey, let's change this meeting. Who attends these meetings? Let's do this, right? Like, it, it, don't wait for something's broken and fix it. Even if it's not broken, fix it, change it, refresh it. I don't want people to grow familiar or to fall in love with settings. We're not always going to be in this auditorium. We're going to grow. We're going to get bigger auditoriums. We're going to get new locations. I told our team, we're going to get buildings. We're not just going to be in one. We're going to be in multiple buildings. Like, just start thinking bigger because it's time to go higher. And uh, sometimes all of these things make us fall in love and make us stay small and we don't grow. We don't thrive as leaders. Number seven, I'll finish with this one today. Uh, resist the fear of stress. Resist the fear of stress. What I mean by that is uh, stress absolutely gets, uh, and it should, uh, for the most part, get a bad connotation. Stress is not good for you. It affects your health. It, it affects your mental life. But I believe that there's a, a small space for good stress. What I mean by that is there's good pressure that you should welcome in your life. Um, I, I don't like this victim type mentality that we're living in our culture where I don't want nothing to pressure me. Like life is not safe. Life is not meant to be safe. Uh, we're not supposed to go through life with no kind of pressure or heartache. No, all these things, they actually make us better. They actually make us stronger. You need some resistance if you want to develop muscles. Like, I need to add more weight if I want to get more stronger. I need more stress in order to get stronger. There's a level, there's a percentage of stress that is good for you and I. Uh, I was actually 
uh, reading this book where they were given the example of an orange. And they said, you would never know how good orange juice is if that orange had not been stressed. You, you don't find out what's inside of you until you are pressured and strength. And so don't be afraid of strength. Don't be afraid of conflict, tension, uh, new levels where you may have to, to develop new skills and go and learn. In fact, I would say risk it. Go to the next level. Even if you don't know it all, it gives you space to grow. Okay, now I need to go take some classes. Now I need to go sit down with some leaders. Now I need some new mentors in this area because I just got asked to enter this opportunity where I may not know a lot. But guess what? It's a good area for me to be stressed, pressured to grow. It's time to go higher. The orange needs to be squeezed in order for the juice to come out. Today, where do you need to be some pressured? Have you grown comfortable? You, you're, you're not okay with pain. You're not okay with stress or pressure. Welcome it into your life. Don't resist the fear of stress. There's a good stress that is going to make you better, a better parent, a better husband, a better wife, uh, a better CEO, a better CFO, uh, a better uh, employee. W welcome some of that stress. You know what? I need challenges. I need some weights to be added to my life because I want to develop strength. I want to develop maturity. I want to develop skill sets. I want to develop some of my good things. I believe it's time to go higher. As leaders, a good leader is always looking how they can thrive in the next level. Today, I want to challenge you. Go to the next level in your life. Go to the next level in your leadership skills. Whatever area of life that you are a leader in, family, home, business, organization, church, go to the next level. It's time to go higher. Resist all of these things. And I believe that you can continue to thrive. Because if you change yourself, you can change your world.